the hand. Go. This is head coach Ross of the Attacks Gym. I'm going to go show you guys another video blog of mine uh, dealing with some of the questions, the incessant questions that was raised about our particular variant of sword and hammer. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and go through and deal with some of the the, the inconsistencies and some of the issues that I have some problems with in regards to functionality regarding the, the sword and hammer. Okay. All right. Helping me out is my friend and fellow martial artist Scott. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go through the first area immediately regarding sword of hammer. The contention that the counter grab, the pin, actually gives you control of your assailant. Let's say your assailant is nice enough to grab you in the first place instead of just bombing out on you, instead of just throwing a punch. Bang! That's what really happens. 95% of the time this doesn't happen. He catches you slipping and he fires and you have to do your sword and hammer from there. That's what happens in real life. That's not what you're taught. That's why your sword and hammer will not function the great majority of the time, in my opinion. But going back to the specific concern about controlling the grip, if he grabs me here and he's kind enough not to punch my head off, let's just say he doesn't do that, he just grabs me with the, with the Vulcan death grip on my shoulder, okay, I then cover his hand using my yellow belt Kempo power to pin his hand here, okay, this does not give me control of him. All I did is remove this hand, which can help me block that hand or make this hand to get, go away out of the field, exactly as you demonstrated here. If, now you're going to say, okay, well, if you throw your hand sword, you block his punch. Not necessarily true. If he throws a hook and I throw a knife hand, that's what's going to happen. If he throws a straight hand, straight punch and I throw a knife hand, that might happen and I might be able to get a little inflict, but I'm going to get hit. Here's the problem. As he does this, nothing stops him from reloading this right hand and firing again, or worse yet, you guys from the neighborhood know what I'm talking about. When he throws this punch right here and you get here, he'll shift hands. He'll just drop right hand. There. That. That's bad. That's really bad for you. And you only have your sword and hammer. No one told you how to get out of a sleeper hole. Well, if you actually trained your sword and hammer properly, you'll escape the sleeper hole. But let me show you one other issue. When he throws the right and you're doing your best to throw your knife hand and block, was nothing stopping him from just grabbing your shoulder with his right hand and punching the back of your head with his left. This is why you have to train your sword and hammer in 360 degrees and deal with actual resistance. It's not his job to throw the kind of offensives that you can defend. How many cooperative bad guys do you know? If you do know any, send them over this way because I want to look good too. Okay? The idea here is to impose your skill upon him regardless of what he does and access the, the targets that are, that are both gender neutral, meaning that it doesn't matter what your size and your strength and your age is, you, you, you use these tactics and hit these areas, you still neutralize your opponent, and combine them with the other factors that will help you. In this case, you know, uh, both Scott and I are adult males, so we're relatively similar weight and size and structure. He's just bigger, taller, and better looking. Okay? <laughs> okay, so... Okay? <laughs> and so, what we're going to do is we're going to go through what it looks like. I'm going to go step by step so you can see it. He's going to grab me. I'm going to counter grab. He's going to punch. All right? When he's blocking here, he's going to keep punching, keep punching. That's what happens in real life. Now, what happens is he's going to do that. That's what happens. So, it's pushing me forward. Okay? And then as I'm starting to defend against this, he's going to shift his hand, start punching me the other hand, I'm going to try to defend against that, and then he's going to go for the choke, which is what happens in real life. Bam. Now, here's the area where I see so many other questions. I want to show you how to do sword and hammer against a sleeper hole. Okay? Sword and hammer, folks. And right after I show you this, ask the instructor why they didn't show you this. Okay? Let me turn to the side where you can see it. First, I'm going to, first I'm going to hear you can see the sleeper hole put on. All right? This is a legitimate sleeper hole. This is not faking. All right? And he's going to put on his choke. And you see my voice change right here because he's actually putting it. Now, I'm going to turn to the side again so you can see it. This is a real sleeper hole. This is not a joke. This is not... A, this, this is not... There you go. See the change in my voice? It is not... It's not rehearsed. Okay? So, what's going to happen here is... Gonna, from off the pen, he's gonna grab him, throw the punches right here. Bam! Whenever he feels like he's gonna go for the go for the choke, and I'm gonna immediately start responding with with the sword and hammer, and then I'm gonna tell you what I did. All right? Okay. Whenever you ready, go. All right? Whenever you ready, go. <laughs> okay. Let me show you guys what happened. All right. The first thing I did was here. I dropped my chin. This hand is actually the hammer fist. 
there's a reason why it worked in lifting him up. It wasn't because I was getting a judo throw on. You don't know judo. It, well, you don't actually know you don't. In Kempo, a lot of people don't know that they actually have been shown many of the principles of leverage in judo. It's just that they haven't been trained it functionally enough, okay? So, well, you do know how to hammer fist at a yellow belt. You know how to hammer fist. What I did was I grabbed and I hammer fisted to my right pocket. Hand sword, I grabbed here, and I hand sorted toward my right pocket. We know how to transition, shrug our shoulders, and transition toward a right neutral bow. We know how to drop into a horse stance and turn. Once you go from here to here, and then drop, you're doing a booty bump to lift him off the ground. You're doing a, butt, a booty bump like, like in basketball. You know how you're bootying off the defender? That's exactly the movement you're doing. As you do this movement, you're hitting his hip girdle back, which lifts him up. You're going under his hips, under his waist, and you're pulling and turning with your shoulder. Let me turn here. Show you, I want to show you something here that's really, that's really significant, okay? Scott is really squeezing, you know? As I'm talking to you, you can see the change in my voice. What I'm gonna do here is do hand sword to my pocket, hammer fist to my he's not, He's not going for me, folks. You can tell by my voice, all right? Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull and turn my shoulders and pivot, driving off my left foot, Right and turn. This single movement, that's what you want. This gives you the space for shooting your elbow back while he's up here and then firing this hand sword. It also allows you, with your movement, to step outside of his right foot. One movement, it goes here, turn, lift, kind of thing, you step outside. You're breaking him down. That's the movement you want. Notice this. His hands let go because he has to keep his balance. As I'm shifting into my bow stance, I'm taking his balance just from the bow stance. I haven't even finished the sword and hammer yet. This fist is still hammering down to the outside of my foot in the back of his own rear heel. So I'm turning, breaking him down. This right hand, which that hammer fits in his hamstring, is bucking down and grabbing and turning his hips and dropping him. Sword and hammer. Sword and hammer combined with the offensive use of your bow stance. Your instructor should have taught you this. Again, you know what to do? This is head coach Ross of the Attacks Gym video blog on sword and hammer. All my DVDs go very much into depth into detail regarding these techniques from every single position of hand-to-hand -hand combat, including weapons, inclusive of firearms. And I'll show you, using techniques that you already know, how to deal with these matters, but instead using the functional attack gym paradigm. Helping me out is my friend Scott. If you have any questions or comments, leave it at the end of this video. Thank you very much for your time.